Today, uh, we want to uh, to introduce Islamic Center in Fort Collins, and when we are thinking about Islamic Center in Fort Collins, coming up to our mind, uh, Doctor Muhammad uh, Siddiqui which is the oldest uh, Muslim or the oldest person here in uh, in Islamic community in Fort Collins. So, uh, Dr. Siddiqui, would you introduce yourself to our own use? Uh, I was born in uh, Hyderabad, India in 1928. Uh, belonged to a middle class educated Muslim family. Uh, Hyderabad was a uh, Muslim state under uh, the British uh, India and uh, the Muslims uh, in South India basically came directly from Arabia, from Yemen, from, uh, from uh, Sana'a, from Saudi Arabia. Uh, they did not come from the north but came straight from Saudi Arabia. So my ancestry uh, goes back to uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. That's where the name Siddiqi comes from. I was uh, uh, educated uh, in Hyderabad in the Osmania University, which was unique in India because it has a medium of instruction, uh, Urdu rather than English. So all my education was uh, in Urdu language, and I graduated from Usmania University with a master's degree in 1948, uh, when, when I was uh, you know, just uh, a young man of, uh, of uh, what, uh, 21, was three years old. Uh, by this time, India was partitioned into India and Pakistan, and uh, most of the educated uh, Muslims in India were migrating to Pakistan because uh, we didn't know what the uncertain future will be under the Hindu, Hindu majority India. So, so we had a, a council, a family council, and my older brother, he had a master's degree in English literature, I had a master's degree in mathematics, and uh, we had uh, a younger sister and a younger brother who were still studying. And my uh, father had died; my mother was alive. So we were uh, we had a family council with our uncles and so on. And then we decided that I should go to, go ahead to Pakistan and find a job and then invite other people. So that's when uh, I migrated to Pakistan. And, uh, you know, Pakistan was a very new country. There was uh, very few people who were highly educated, so there was a great demand for, for anyone with a master's degree. So I was, as soon as I landed there, I got a job in Karachi for a few months, and then I had an opportunity uh, to go to, uh, to, to have an interview with the uh, Pakistan Air Force, they were recruiting some educated, some statisticians, some psychologists, something to evaluate the cadets. So I got a job with them and moved to Lahore and then uh, after, a, after a year with, uh, air, with the Pakistan Air Force, I decided either you, you be, a, you know, a military person or you be a civilian person. Or I, Prefer to be uh, uh, you know, join a university, so I 
found a job in the Punjab University, was teaching their statistics. However, I did not have a degree in statistics, so I was basically teaching that. So, finally, I had an opportunity from the uh, United States government uh, on a scholarship to go and get training in the sampling science at the Census Bureau. So that's when I came to the United States in 1953. Now, that was quite a long time ago. When I came to Washington, D.C., I found that hardly there are any Muslims except uh, maybe in the embassies. I looked around and found that there was a mosque there which was uh, just opened by President Eisenhower. And then I was curious to find out what how was the Muslim presence. So I was st started reading about uh, uh, the Muslims in the United States. I didn't find very many references, except in one, uh, uh, one encyclopedia of minorities or something. So they barely mentioned that there may be 200,000 uh, Muslims uh, in the United States. That was in 1953. And there were uh, about uh, three mosques, which uh, we uh, thought, uh, I, I thought there were about three mosques. One was in Cedar Rapids, which is still called a mother mosque, you know, the oldest mosque in the United States, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And uh, it was mostly, it was built by uh, Lebanese Muslims who had come and settled there. Uh, there were some Lebanese Muslims present in, in Minnesota and Iowa, those places. So they had this uh, first mosque. And another mosque was in Sacramento, California, which was uh, built by, uh, by Pakistani. They were not Pakistani at that time, because they were Indian. But they came from the area which later became Pakistan. And they had settled there as farmers and so on. So they had, they had a mosque in, uh, in Sacramento. And the third mosque, which I knew of, was built in Washington, D.C. That is uh, the presence of uh, Islam. And, you know, I, I walked the street and once in a while somebody stopped me and said, Salaam Alaikum. I said, who are you? He said, I'm a black Muslim. If you're not familiar with black Muslim, there was a black Muslim uh, movement here in this country led by a person named Elijah, Elijah Muhammad. And uh, he said he met God in the form of a human being. And he came to him and said, uh, you, are, uh, you are a prophet for, uh, for this time and for your people. So he started a movement called Black Muslims. So, so I met a few uh, people who were Black Muslims, but they were not ortho, they're not like Sunni Muslims or any Muslims like us. They, are, they were inventing Islam their own way. So they're the new prophet. And he said, we, uh, we don't follow the classical Islam. We will read some, some parts from the Quran, parts from the Bible. And instead of fasting in Ramadan, which goes around, you know, in, uh, in the year, in the different seasons, we'll just fast during December. That's the easiest for us. <laughs> but this movement, you know, like, uh, and uh, it was based on uh, the theory that the original man was a black man. And some mad scientists do some kind of genetic experiments and, and made white devils, you know, they used to call the white man as a devil. You know. But this was based on pure racism. You know. It had nothing to do with Islamic teachings of, you know, of brotherhood of all human beings, not at all. It was based on uh, just artificial uh, some theology which he made, but they were some, uh, he had quite a bit of following. What year oh, yeah. it was that? It was in the 1930s. <coughs> it started, the movement started, mm -hmm. and by the time I was there, there was, it was maybe there were two million followers you know, among the blacks in 1953. And they had, uh, they had temples rather than mosques, okay. There are temples, and there are some uh, very strong uh, people like uh, Malcolm X, you know, became black Muslim. Uh, later, he went to uh, Saudi Arabia for a Hajj, 
and he found that there is a, no such thing as discrimination in Islam, the blacks and whites and yellows and Chinese and Indians, everybody is uh, making Hajj. And he, so he, he, he became true Muslim when he came back and he rebelled, uh, rebelled against uh, Elijah Muhammad together with his son. But his son was a secretly a true Muslim. Yeah. So, uh, to tell the short story, uh, long story short, eventually most of these black Muslims converted. You know, Allah opens the doors different ways. So, so, so we estimate that now, instead of 200,000 Muslims, which they estimated in, uh, in the 1950s, we now estimate, you know, fast forward, maybe about seven million Muslims. Do you, do you know how much? Six to seven million Muslims. Yeah, the percentage of the white. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the black percentage of uh, black, uh, you know, black people who are Muslims, uh, we estimate about 30, 30 to 40 percent of them. The rest, you know, are from the Muslim countries and their children and so on and so forth. You know, recently, for example, they wrote large number of uh, large number of Somalis have come all of you will see a lot of Somalis in Denmark, a lot of Somalis in uh, Minnesota, a lot of Somalis because they uh, disturbed. Then you see a period when there were a lot of Syrians coming in because of uh, disturbance in Syria. At one time there was a lot of uh, Pakistani and so on migrating here. So, uh, in 1968, President Johnson uh, step, uh, abolished, there was, it used to be a quota system here, you know, mm -hmm. and most the European countries, they had large quota, you know, thousands, and Muslim countries were, you know, 100, 100 uh, Pakistan, 100 from there. So there was no room for Muslim immigration into this country before, before this law passed in which the Congress approved, you know, that, uh, that uh, now we open, people can come on the merit, you know. And the merit means either uh, they are highly educated and will be very useful in the United States, or they are uh, related to somebody who is already uh, a citizen of the United States, like that, so the door open. And then, you see from the 1970s, a great number of uh, Muslims come here. Now, my story, uh, to, I came to Fort Collins in 1964. Before that, I was working in border with the, with the Department of Commerce, federal. So I was a federal employee as a mathematical statistician in the National Bureau of Standards. So the story of how I came to Fort Collins is I was publishing many papers, research papers in uh, statistics. I had a PhD from North Carolina, and after that I got a job here with the National Bureau of Standards. I was publishing papers in uh, time series analysis, in uh, uh, robust estimation, and things like that. At that time, to give you one incidence, uh, they, they were uh, trying to measure the, the velocity of light in vacuum. Okay. So every country will claim they have the exact velocity of light in vacuum, if you know how much it is, you know, they give you uh, approximately 180,000 miles per second, see, velocity of light, which is uh, only two figure accuracy, you know. Now, to, if you want to send, it, send an astronaut to the moon or to Mars, you have to have much more accurate, you know. Uh, so, so the United States claim they can measure the velocity of light in 13 figures, no, 13 figures, correct. And so did France, so did India. Everybody claimed it. But if you compare their numbers, they match up to eight figures and then they are different. This is how what we call the statistical variation or random variation. Yeah. So the question was, uh, which, which velocity of light shall we take? Shall we take the average of them? or the median number of that. So I got involved in this problem with, the, with one boss, and I proposed what we call a robust estimation. That was a very long paper which was published myself and my... Uh, so that gave me so much fame 
mm. that uh, the CSU uh, chairman of the department of statistics, the not here department, section of statistics, not really. So I'm sitting one day in my office, so my secretary says, the person named uh, Greville, he wants to have lunch with you. I said, okay, fine. So there's a cafeteria downstairs, so we went down. And so the Greville said, uh, Moin, you know, they called Moin, Moin, what are you doing here, wasting your energies? You come to, come to a university, that's where you belong, you have to train. Students, you have to do research with the students, PhD students, so you belong to your university. So, how much salary are you getting here? I said, I'm, look, I'm in uh, GS 14 and step uh, grade 2, so I gave the fi figure salary. So, he started scratching the back of the <laughs> oh, boy, you have, you have too much salary here, you know. <laughs> I, I have to go back and consult uh, with the president yeah. of the university and the, you know, the dean. So he. Next day he called and said, well, uh, we will have to give you a professorship, you know. I said, I have no objection. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because usually people start as assistant, you yes. know, assistant professor. They have to publish and then they go to associate professor. But I already published maybe 12 papers in the big journal. And this one paper was, became so famous, you know, 26 pages long. It was the longest paper ever published in the Journal of American Statistical Association. So mm -hmm. that's how that this country doesn't care where you are from, what your religion is, no? Yeah. This is the beauty of this country. If you are a valuable person, if you are doing contribution, exactly. they will bend and back full backwards to, to accommodate you. No nobody ever heard of a young person, you know, just a young person who is, of coming as a full professor. Yeah. Yeah, I came as a full professor here. And he said, we'll give you the, the salary which you're getting for 12 months, we'll give you for nine months, and for uh, summer months, you, have, you will be a consultant to the hydrology department. And they will pick up your so, summer month salary. So I will getting you know, almost 30% uh, more salary for nine, nine, 11, 11 months. So Alhamdulillah, I came here. So I'm very happy, you know, I'm married, I have with children and so on and say, uh, that's, that's when uh, you think the world is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. uh, Allah is Kareem okay. and, uh, you know, everything is going your way. Yeah. And in a, in a strange country, in a new country, you have the honor of becoming a professor in an in a, you know, established university. So I was very happy on that. So I'm in this, uh, uh, so one day, one Friday, uh, somebody calls me and he said, Dr. Siddiqui, where are we going to pray Jumaah prayer? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, shock. I thought I was the only Muslim, you know. Yeah. Really, I was really thought I was the only Muslim in Fort Collins. Because in, 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 in border, there were only two Muslims, I and another one. Which in fact, I got married in border and I had a hard time finding two witnesses, two Muslim witnesses. Which country is another Muslim? Uh, he was, he, 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 this was a student, he was from India, from India. Uh, Aligarh University, the Muslim University. His name was Al Siddiqui, Khalil Siddiqui. Mm -hmm. so he said, Dr. where do we pray? I said, look, uh, according to me, Shafi'i uh, Fiqa says 25 people make Juma prayer. Not, yeah. Yeah. But I know Hanafi Fiqa allows up to three people. So you and I, you find the third person. He said, I know a third person. <laughs> there is a Professor Abdul Baqi in the entomology department. He's from Egypt, so yet he, I said, you contact him. And then uh, he said, where shall we pray? He said, I said, I don't know. I don't know. You go and talk to the, uh, to the uh, student center people. They might be your room. So he went and talked to them. So they immediately gave us a room. Room 210, I remember, which was with us for a long time, up in the student center. Yes, yes. Lovely student center. Yeah. Room 210. He said they reserve it for our, uh, every Friday from 12 to 1. Do you remember what she year? This one? Yeah. This was 1964. Okay. 1964. That's yeah. when I came here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was the only one. <laughs> so there, uh, there was one student. So we, uh, you know, we started. Uh, 
So we go there, uh, so three people. Sometimes I go there and the uh, other are not there. I'm sitting there, <laughs> waiting for that. Then I press the door and go home. Sometimes there are two, sometimes three. But uh, eventually then a few more Pakistanis came in the agriculture department. So we had a, uh, we had a, a good gathering sometimes, maybe five, six. If we had five or six people, Praying Juma, we thought, oh great. <laughs> and they were the history department, they were teaching Middle Eastern history there. Who did make uh, khutbah at that time? Mostly, yeah, mostly I was doing <laughs> But there were some, once in a while I give it to uh, so Professor Abdel Baki, he will, he will make a khutbah. So the first khutbah? Huh? Who is the first, the first one? I, I gave the khutbah. Most so you, you, most you, you. Yeah, three people sitting there. <laughs> 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 and those, and, and then this professor, you see, interesting thing, he used to send the reports which, uh, which the students sent. And the many of them said, oh, we were expecting, you know, the uh, very ministerial, very uh, priestly type of person. But he is uh, just a young man, he's standing in the The Islam is, seems to be a very democratic religion. Mm -hmm. So I. I, you know, some, sometimes I stop there and say, look here, yeah, in Islam we don't have priests, we don't have uh, uh, ministers. Every Muslim who is knowledgeable, we, we respect knowledge and we respect good character. Taqwa. Okay. Anyone who has the knowledge of Islam, of, of the Quran, no. He can read the prayer, he can do khutbah, he can make uh, nikah. You can do anything which uh, other, in other religions some priest or some minister does. And so they were very surprised, very impressed with it. You know, this, is, uh, this is how we started with three people. But after this, uh, as I said, 1970, then, our, then Muslims started coming. You know. A batch of Saudi, Saudis, a batch of Libyans, and a uh, lot of Pakistanis, a lot of Malaysian, and they will they will go in in waves. You know, sometimes there are seventy Malaysian. I remember 1980, I think it was mm. seventy Malaysians, oh, full of Malaysians. <laughs> and then there are no Malaysian. So, yeah. <laughs> then there will be Indonesians. You know? mm. Then there will be all of a sudden the, all these Saudis, then Egyptians, the Pakistanis, the Pakistanis. But they said they were always variable. No. That is not. But always there were approximately 200 to 300 students from Muslim countries here. Yeah. Mostly graduate students, so they were married and children. So I used to go to the, uh, call the international office and say, could you please give me uh, the number of names of uh, from Muslim families that they were born. But we can give you the number of uh, students from Muslim countries. They don't say they may be Christian. Yeah. Okay. They were. So we came to the figure that in, in 1983, I remember there were about uh, eight, eight hundred and fifty. Um, I count Muslims at their family. They won't give you the breakdown. But they just said, okay, eight hundred fifty. So when the, uh, the, the first time the, uh, you think about uh, or you uh, thought about the first masjid in Fort Collins? Okay, uh, that's a very interesting story. No, but anyway, in the 1970, there are quite a good number of Muslims here, maybe 20, 20 or so. Uh -huh. Many of them Saudi Arabia. And the, from uh, Saudi Arabia, there are a very interesting brother, his name was Adnan al aqqaf from Medina, wonderful brother. And he was saying, we have to have a masjid. You, you used to tell me, masjid here we have to have a masjid. I said, well, okay, you find him. You find a place, maybe we'll try to buy it, you know. <laughs> we couldn't find a place, though. Then we, we rented a place downtown, downtown mm. on Lincoln Street, very one side is a bar, and the other, the other side, side, the other side is some dancing or something. But what can we do? We, have, we did have enough money. So we were meeting there, but but this Adnan, you know, he just after me, he said, 
We made a, you know, Muslim Student Association, and he was its Amir, he was its president. We still have yeah. Muslim Student Association on the campus. But he was kept saying, I said, where is the money from? He said, you, you find a place, you will find the money. Finally, one day, I'm sitting here, Adnan comes running and said, Dr. Siddiq, I have found a place. Let's go and see it. So we come and see 900 pictures. And I said, it's a church. It's a church, right? It's a church. Mm -hmm. it's a church of uh, seven, what do they call it? Uh, Salvation Army. Salvation Army Church. Mm -hmm. So we go and talk to the people who are selling it. They said, such, such and such figure, something, 150,000, 149,000, such and such. Right, we, we said, okay, we will, we will not dicker with you, we will not bargain with you so to reduce this to 130. We will take your figure, but one condition. Your, uh, we, will pay you, we will pay you $20,000 now, and you carry it for one year, loan without interest. If you agree to that, we will buy it and we will give you $20,000 now. Where is that $20,000? There are some Saudi brothers, they pledged you. Adnan mm -hmm. and some of them. There was <coughs> Salim Sahab. I remember a few names. Ago that okay. There was some in mathematics and the statistics department and so on. So we collected $20,000 and they said, okay, if you take our figure, $149,000, $500, uh, we will carry without interest. So, so we, did you have limit time to complete the uh, payment or? Uh, we paid the 20,000. So I mean, now, uh -huh. another job, another problem. Uh -huh. Where do we get another 130,000, so to say? Yeah. So Adnan says, I'm going back to Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. and will try to raise money. So that man, he went to Abdullah bin Baz, Abdullah bin Baz, huh? he got a a letter from him saying that support these people, they are establishing a masjid in you know, Fort Khan. He said he went from, from one, uh, one Tajir to another Tajir, from door to door, 5,000 dinar here, 10,000 dinar here. But eventually he brought about 40,000. 40,000? 40, I said, well, what shall we do? We still have so much. Yeah. Do you know the, the date exactly when you make the contract for the Muslim? So that was 1980, I think, 19, 1979 and 1980. Um, I don't know exactly. He made a contract. In fact, I made three contracts the same year. One in Boulder, one in Greeley. Because they were uh, no senior person. Anyway, they're all students. You know. mm -hmm. At the same time, the Greeley people bought a place, the Boulder people bought a place. And they are mostly Saudis, you know, mm -hmm. the Saudi students. Really, a lot of Saudi students, they are studying education. Mm -hmm. But they, they wanted it. There were some Egyptians, there were some Saudis, Libyans. They are always mixed. Yeah. Saudis, Egyptians, Libyans. They were there mostly, I don't know why, Egyptians and Saudis were always there in the majority. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about then other countries like, uh, like Malaysia? Malaysia people, you know, they are not rich, they are poor. I mean, I'm Pakistan, India. Oh, what will it be? You know, we cannot collect hundreds of thousands. The Malaysians, they used to come for prayers or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the only rich people we depended was Saudis, you know, basically speaking, not even, not even Libya. Because of Adafi, a crazy guy, was sitting there, right? Yep. He's not going to <laughs> support a bunch in the I mean, whatever the others gave us from their own pocket, let's put it, not to go back to their country and, and bring it. So Adnan, he went and, you know, he, he brought that to us. Then a student came in statistics. He was my student. He wanted to do PhD with my student, and he was very rich. His father was rich. He was. Mm -hmm. So he said, how much money do we need? He said, it was about 100,000, right? Yeah. So he went back and brought hundred dollars. We paid off in six months. We paid it off. Mm -hmm. This was, uh, I said, uh, okay. So uh, then I, then we started praying. The first Juma prayer we had fifteen. Uh, fifteen people. Uh, then uh, you know, 
but people knew they were there masjid here. We made it to masjid. Then they started coming in. Now everybody coming in. Most, again, mostly Saudis and Libyans. And by, at that time, there was a bifurcation. And then we uh, brought some Cambodians also. About 60 Cambodians at the time. Did, did you start uh, women and men the same time? That's right, you see that. Okay. Uh, my family always prayed in the same place. There was no other place. It was just one floor. So finally, you see, the men were so many that my daughters were being pressed against the wall. And they were, so I said to Saleh, I said, look, we have to have a place, either upstairs or downstairs. We look upstairs, it's impossible to build upstairs. He said, okay, we will uh, dig, it, dig up and make it a place for women. I said, where is the money? He said, I'll go and get it. So he was Saleh, his name. So he went back again, to brought $150,000. So we dug up and made a place for, you know, basement. Mm -hmm. That's for women. That's how it happened. Because uh, only my family was coming. No other women were coming. I, you know, my daughters and my, my wife and my daughters were coming. So, but then, uh, you know, after that we had a place for women, then other women started coming. But they didn't want to come and be, be squeezed by men, you know. Like well, meanwhile, there was a problem in Cambodia, remember? And there's uh, a lot of killings going on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so then Catholic, Catholic Church was spo sponsoring Cambodian, Cam Cambodian Muslims. They brought them, forced them to become Catholic. And these uh, Muslims were not so eager to become Catholic. But, uh, you know, they even resisted not being Catholic. So finally we said, uh, we Muslims have to sponsor them. So we sponsored about 60 Cambodians at one time. And the question was, uh, how to support them? We don't have money. Again, Saleh, again Saleh went back uh -huh. and he brought money. We bought a farm. We bought a farm to establish some co What What's your uh, difference? I the brought, uh, do, do you remember see, uh, what's your uh, Which year it was? Uh, it was in the 80s, uh, 84, 85 maybe, or something a little later. I, I also went to Saudi Arabia and brought some money to open a shop for Cambodian women. Uh, we had a sewing shop employed to Cambodian women. It's like 1984, I think. So, uh, from the period, uh, from 70, uh, 1978, during to... Uh, uh, 1984. Did you think anyone of the community Muslim about Dawah, or did you start in Dawah at that time, no. or just uh, yeah, just just for ourselves? You know, we had to. We were just trying to find a place for ourselves to pray regularly, rather than downtown. In, you know, downtown. So you know, that, no idea. But uh, people came and became Muslim. Some of them. Mm -hmm. Not not a great number. Uh, mostly girls used to come. Uh, I remember a, a girl came from from Colorado Springs. She became Muslim, and her uh, parents kicked her out. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were right wing evangelical Christians, you know. Mm -hmm. And the young girl, 20, 20 21. Uh, so she came, so I said, okay, you stay with us and we'll try to arrange for you a husband. <laughs> no. So we quickly said, which, uh, which brother uh, was uh, single? single. Yeah. And we found some, some uh, Lebanese uh, brother who was very, uh, wanted to get married. So we got, got them married. Beautiful couple, you know? They have a lot of children now and they're very good Muslim, excellent. She used to answer the Christians, you know, mm -hmm. why she became Muslim and so on. Do you, mm -hmm. do you, remember, do you remember which uh, uh, the name or the first one who is uh, uh, become uh, or became Muslim? How many? Which no, 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 the first one. First one? Yeah. No, I don't, I don't remember. The, a, a girl used to come even here in, uh, in the when we were praying in the uh, student center, mm -hmm. she used to come and join us. And uh, her name was, I forgot her name, 
But uh, she, she was a good Muslim, but she was, she was the only one I remember, the first one. Many, many more girls than boys, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I really admire them. Allah has guided them in spite of their parents' uh, dis disapproval. You know. mm -hmm. They used to come and, and we had to shelter them somehow. Sometimes. Just a few months and I, it was a hard time to find young people too. <laughs> yeah. we, and uh, one girl came and the only, only a person who was willing to marry her was the Iraqi Shia. You know. I didn't want to marry Shia, but any, anyway, like, what can you do? Okay. Married a Shia, but uh, anyway, so, but uh, I think in my experience in my own lifetime, maybe about 20, 20, 25 people became Muslim through through contact with us. Yeah. Especially my wife used to bring these you know, some women also, some older women. But uh, many of them, uh, young girls, they were sad stories because their parents. Some some parents were accommodating. They say, okay, but, uh, no no big problem. Muslims, Christians, Jews, you know, they're all Abrahamic faith, and this yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But some evangelical type, the right wingers, they would say, you'll go to hell. No, you'll go to hell. Muhammad is a false prophet. Why are you going there? But they were, they were really true believers, you know, and stood in spite of that. None of them ever apostatized, you know. Mm -hmm. One who, the one, the one thing, I, I don't remember any girl or any boy who became Muslim and later said, okay, I'm fed up with this. And nobody left Islam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So when did you think to buy this uh, land? Well, okay, what happened was, okay. So this uh, Sare brought money for these Cambodians, so we bought, uh, we bought a farm for them. And uh, so there were two families who settled over there. And uh, meanwhile, I went to, I had on sabbatical, I went to Kuwait. I went to Kuwait, I came back, and I found that this, the farm has been sold mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without my so I'm the only by the way, director. There were nine directors to start with, by the way. We have, uh, besides executive committee, we had directors. So that is required by the by the state, you know, to register. You have to have a board of directors. And for the uh, non-profit, they allow up to one, minimum one, uh, max maximum up to nine or ten or any, no maximum. So we had, we started with nine directors. We had a drawn up constitution also. Uh, we had formally, and then we had also the structure of executive committee. We did all that, you know, mm -hmm. as I, right at the beginning. So that we have a, a system of electing uh, executive committee and so on. So mm -hmm. uh, and, but there, there was always some rivalry between uh, Salafis and Akhwan. Mm -hmm. At that time, I don't know whether. When I came back, they had already sold the farm, and the people who bought it, they were so uh, sharp. They said, "Let's uh, let's get this farm free from these Muslims," you know. Huh? Mm -hmm. And they they brought a lot of false claims that uh, that this farm has a lot of breed carcasses of animals. This, uh, they were, uh, the, uh, the house and the farm is not fit for uh, living and things like that. And they're, they hired a liar. We had to hire a liar. For two years, we fought, fought it, paying, paying the lawyer, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the farm we bought for $150,000, $160,000. But the lawyer, 20000 And the judge and these two lawyers probably together. He always, every time the you know case comes, the judge postpones it. You know? mm -hmm. We have some discussion. They postpone, postpone, mm -hmm. two years, and at the end, he said, "Okay, this uh, this farm belongs to the Islamic Center. They have no claim." After two years, why didn't mm -hmm. you say that in the beginning? I I just don't. And uh, so we uh, 
after paying this lawyer and all that, we got about 110,000. And the Amir, to, uh, Amir at that time, I don't want to make names. Anyway, anyway he said, uh, let's announce to the General Assembly that we have 110,000. Let's get the ideas from that. I, I got scared, you know. This is Allah's money, this is brother. So I had a couple of other brothers. I said, go and find out some land. So it was for sale. So they came and said, there's a land for sale here. A three acre land for sale. And uh, this is for 100, 160 or 165,000. We have 110,000. And the woman is willing to take loan without interest. Mm. So I grabbed that money and immediately signed a contract and uh, signed a contract together with 60,000 loan for to be paid for five years, within five years, which we paid casually in five years. So that was uh, 1993 we bought this land. So when, when, when you, when you uh, bought this land, no one at that time was uh, interested to buy this land, or I mean, well, the, the university was interested. Ah. Uh, they wanted to make it. There was another builder was interested. He wanted to put houses here. So why the woman decided to? Uh, she uh, Allah guided her. Uh, <laughs> really, alhamdulillah. Uh, she said, I, I I rather give it to you than to a developer now. It looks like there is like a competition. Huh? Huh? It looks like there is a competition between the well, not much, and not com He was first actually. She was about to sign a contract with that when we came. And then she said, I prefer you people. No. I prefer you people. So he broke he broke the discussion with others and signed the contract. So, so in 1993 we bought this place, I remember for 160,000. 165 maybe. So we paid 105 and borrowed $60,000, which we paid in five years, 12000 each year. And, uh, mm -hmm. and we finished it off in five years. We didn't, we didn't have extra money, so we had to raise. Yeah. There is those. Alhamdulillah, so this is, uh, this is the beginning of this story. I guess I'll stop here. Okay. okay. Uh, today we will continue talking about the Islamic Center in Fort Collins. We stopped last part on the buying the land uh, for a new masjid. And today with uh, Dr. Siddiqui we will continue talking about the building masjid and contract with the company and everything about the new masjid. Uh, let me backtrack a little bit because uh, in the 1980s we sponsored many Cambodians. I think about we come actually we uh, come we uh, sponsored two Cambodian families, but instead of two we got about ten, so about sixty Cambodians here. They all came. In fact, what happens was these Cambodians were sponsored by Catholic Church. Okay. Mm -hmm. When they bring them, they pressure them, pressure them to convert to Christianity. Yeah. And these mm -hmm. Cambodians are very strong believers, you see. They rather die than, uh, you know, that's what happened in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, uh, they were looking for a way out. So there were about 50, 60 Cambodians in uh, California, in Seattle, so they all came, although we just had two. So then we had uh, the problem of how to uh, get some employment for them, you know. We don't want to leave them in charity. So uh, I raised some money uh, from some Saudi brothers to open a shop for two of them, you know, a mm -hmm. sewing shop. We had a sewing shop. And then later we bought a land, about mm -hmm. 35 acre land, you know, about uh, east of uh, Fort Collins, maybe about 10 miles from here, 35 acre land. That's the minimum land. Uh, mm -hmm. For one family, they say, you know, mm -hmm. you cannot buy less than that, 35 acres. So, so we uh, we put two uh, two families over there to take care of the land. 
and uh, uh, one of our brothers became the manager. You mean the farm? You mean the farm? Yeah, yeah okay. That's no, no. So you had the farm. You, did no. you hear about it? Yes, I have heard about it. Yeah, okay. So, uh, so we, had, uh, we had a farm. We uh, used to raise some cattle, some chicken, you know, people mm -hmm. go there and slaughter and things like that. And the farm actually was rented out uh, sharecropping to some uh, neighboring farmers. And they used to give us some money, you know, like that. But there was a lot of controversy about the farm. You know. mm -hmm. uh, people, some people say it is being mismanaged. It is not uh, producing enough income for the, for the masjid. It's just enough for the two families plus the manager, but not enough to, you know. Community. So that they were pressuring and selling the land. I say, no, don't sell the land, keep it. But then I had, I had to go on sabbatical. I went on sabbatical to Kuwait for one year. When I came back, brothers had already sold me. Oh. Sold the farm, you see. And uh, they didn't consult me or they didn't in, in, inquire me and so on. And they sold it to some sharp guy, you know. He bought the farm for 150 or 150 thousand dollars, something like that. Then after a few months, he paid two thousand dollars a month, you know. He had, he had borrowed money for us. But then, <coughs> His, uh, you know, his mind changed. He went to some lawyer. The lawyer said, "Okay, you will, you will grab the land. You know, we'll bring a suit against these Muslims uh, mm -hmm. and grab the land, saying that they cheated us. They did not represent us correctly. So they brought a suit. And on that lawyer, so we had to hire a lawyer. And mm -hmm. I don't know if these people are who were there who were doing this. So when I came, the suit was going on. And these, you know." These guys, uh, and the judge was probably something as hanky-panky. He, uh, he will never decide anything. It's postponed, postponed. Every time you postpone, you have to pay $1,000 to this lawyer, okay? Mm -hmm. so you keep postponing, keep postponing. And after two years, we have paid about almost $20,000, $20,000. The judge says, well, uh, the, the, the buyers have no merit. The land belongs to the uh, to Islamic settler. Father, what is this? <laughs> it takes him two years to decide that. There is, they had no case. It is actually, just they were not. So anyway, we got the but. But after all these expenses or legal expenses, what we got was hundred ten thousand dollars. We lost almost. They, they won't even pay the rent for those two years. They didn't pay any. No, so that's what uh, we got. So while we got this $110,000, the Amir, you know, yeah. the Amir uh, said, let's announce what to do with this money. I said, no, no way, you can't do that. You deposit, you deposit, you give to me. The who, who was the, the Amir at that time? It was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, he, he had a good intention, I think. Right, let's invest it somewhere. You know, but we already invested and we had a sad experience. Now you want to turn around and invest? I said, let's not do that. So one, uh, one brother came to me and he said, there is a land for sale, you know, mm -hmm. just about $160,000, three acre land, 3.2 acre, this land. Mm -hmm. This land there. Let's take that money and invest it. So this land belonged to a, a widow, a woman, in, in her 60s maybe. Uh -huh. And she had other offers. She had the offer. Uh, some builder wants to, wanted to build about 12 or some houses here. No. And they had all that plan. But when we told her we want to build a masjid here, she said, okay, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Whatever you say. You know. So we agreed to her price, $160,000. And we said we have, we'll give you a hundred thousand now, and you carry six thousand. Mm -hmm. So she said okay, and she said we we don't pay any interest. She said okay, uh, so five years, you pay me twelve thousand dollars a year for five years. Okay. So uh, that's how. Uh, Just I heard like uh, there is like a competition between other. There was probably people. not much competition, but she they were there. Somebody wanted to buy it. I don't know what price they offered, 
But uh, you know, and he gonna to be the university crash. also wanted to buy. Huh? University. University. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I mean, they have just next, across the street is university. You know. Yeah. Yeah, they wanted to buy you know, build some building or for the. You know, they are always building for students. You know, yeah. short of student housing, very convenient location for them. But they were interested. But anyway, they, it was not finalized with her. You know. So she gave it to us. I don't know what uh, how she decided, but anyway, she said, I prefer to you. You know, I'd rather have a mosque here than housing or things like that. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Is she Christian? Oh, yeah, she was a Christian. I mean, yeah, was Jewish Christian. No, no, I'm not Jewish. No. She was a Christian. But, you know, I mean, uh, whatever. And the same thing happened uh, to the masjid there, you know. Uh, we got that uh, from a Christian. It was a church, actually. Yeah. The previous church. So we, we got it. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. So what uh, what was your plan after you bought the... Yeah, we wanted uh, to build a mosque, but still here, of course, right? I mean... No, at, the, that, at that time, we could have built a masjid for $150,000. Oh. But we didn't have $150,000. No, $150,000 in 1993 is something like a million dollars today, you know, mm -hmm. because of the inflation, because of everything. Uh, I'll give, give you an example. Uh, I, my house, for example, at that time uh, was maybe ninety thousand rupees, ninety thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Now it may be about three hundred thousand. See, the, three, four times, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. So anyway, the land, especially the land near the university, you know, could have been uh, much more. Yeah, but anyway, it was. Uh, but we didn't have one hundred fifty thousand. Okay. So we uh, tried to. Raise, uh, raise that money. So, uh, we, uh, you know, we had sent some people over there overseas, but you uh, know, uh, we were not really uh, pressed, pressed for buying land because we were a small community, you know, small. and that was enough for us. The old masjid, yeah. was enough for us. Mm -hmm. so we were happy. We said, okay, when the money comes, we will build it. And while it was happening, that you know the 9/11 happened, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know the FBI was after us, and uh, uh, so we say no more fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we raise fund, they will go and uh, will shut down or take away the property. You know that's what's happening at other places. Mm -hmm. So I said let's like like you, mm -hmm. just don't show, and uh, you know some. Some people who were very good, like Anwar Awlaki, he was from Yemen. But they, he was our, uh, you know, he used to give khutbas, he used to give talks about the prophets, and he was a very nice man. Now later it turned out he was uh, Al Qaeda. You know. mm -hmm. he, went, he went to Yemen and became a leader of Al Qaeda and things like that. Anwar Awlaki. Yeah, he was human. I mean, he was a very close friend to so many people here. And in the community? Yeah, he was, uh, you know, was, uh, what was he studying? Civil engineering. Civil engineering. Civil engineering. Yeah. Civil engineering. Yeah. But he was a good scholar. Yeah. And he used to talk very nicely. You know? mm -hmm. Good in English. He was high. Because he was born in here, in this country. He was an American citizen, by the way. Mm -hmm. He was born. His father was here studying while he was born. So he, he fluent English and good knowledge of Islam, he used to give talk. I don't know what change, or, you know, it was, sometimes you don't know whether he changed or uh, he was framed, you know. You don't mm -hmm. know what's, happen, what's happened behind, you know. You say you are a terrorist, for example. You don't know you are really a terrorist, or it's just that they want to get rid of you. I know, it's possible. Anyway, so that was... Uh, uh, that was, you know, we were, we were said, let's uh, not do anything for them, four or five years. You know. So we were quiet, not, not raising any fund, not, uh, FBI used to come sometimes and interview me, and they were threatening me, that if uh, Dr. Sidi, if you don't cooperate, then we will go to every Muslim in the community and ask them. See? They were uh, so, uh, so afraid, they were, they were thinking that if you have a cell, the, the word, you know, is cell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a terrorist cell in Fort Collins. You know? Even the uh, uh, Denver Post reporter, etc., they come used to come. Now, by the way, Sayyid Qutb used to be 
in Greek, mm. and in his book, Milestones, no, no. he wrote about Greek, that even the church, you know, they encourage boys and girls coming down. I mean, he painted the greedy. I mean, a new person who comes, especially a religious Muslim, mm -hmm. he thinks the boys and girls mixing here, dating, even the church encouraging them to have dance together. It hits us as a very uh, bad thing, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen in Muslim countries. So he wrote something about that. So I remember the Denver Post guy comes to tell me, he said, uh, what's so here that uh, Sayyid Tob, you have, uh, you have uh, uh, Awlaqi, Sayyid Khutub, what's happening here? So I said, there is a wind which comes from the, from the mountains. Mm -hmm. uh, it is called uh, uh, some wind, uh, I should have the name. Anyway, that makes people here, you know, very extremist. Chinook, <laughs> <laughs> Chinook, yeah. The Chinook winds from the mountains, it makes people extreme. <laughs> so I, you know, I kind of laughed at him. So this was the impression to be there. That, that, uh, so I was, you know, uh, not very enthusiastic, and finally, uh, Brother Mantar Sen, mm -hmm. he was at the, uh, uh, at the HP, Good at and Packer, and he was a good, good administrator, good organizer. He said uh, uh, he will be, he will help raise the funds and build the mosque. And meanwhile, there was a very uh, a, an architect from Turkey. His name was Turu, Turu Toros. Huh? Mm -hmm. He was from Izmir. Well, and, huh? When uh, this was, was about uh, 2000. Uh, 2005, six, maybe. You know. mm -hmm. I mean, kind of, the people were forgetting about, you know, yeah, like, like, people were cooling down. But mm -hmm. so they still to us. So he said, okay, let's start planning the, planning the masjid. So the brother threw, he says, okay, I'll give you 60% discount. This is for Allah's sake, you know. So he spent a lot of time, you know, studying and planning. He made the whole plan. This masjid is originally this Brother Tulu's plan, which is Allah. And he, you know, he has a he had a good architect. He, in his own mind, in his own way, mm. he had a building of that building also. You know, uh, uh, does he live here? And uh, he lived here. In he was here about two, three years. Mm. And so we used to meet every every Saturday, so to say. They had a committee. The Masjid Committee. You don't know where you used to meet. You'll be meeting sometime. It's Muhammad Urayat, you know. He has an office. Muhammad Urayat, no, mm -hmm. he is just visiting. Yeah. Did, did you know him before? No, I, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Okay, he had a good business, good engineering business. But we used to meet in his office. There was another um, American Muslim who used to meet in his office. And so, year after year, there were some women also part of it. Some, uh, some girls studying in, uh, in building and construction department here. And they, they had a, uh, the teacher there said, okay, these Muslim people want to build a mosque here, okay, we'll have a competition. Mm -hmm. You, everyone, every student will build a mosque. So, you know, they were really enthusiastic. So, we had about 30 plans. <laughs> there was a Muslim girl also there. So she also had a plan. But it was all just planning, planning. And then there was a company called Neenam, very famous construction company here. Yeah? They got involved. No. We said, okay, you, you come and help us. And so we were paying them, you know, consulting and planning and things like that. Their estimate was seven and a half million dollars to build a mosque. I said, come on, come on, guys, seven and a half. Because at that time, the Saudis built a mosque in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, are you familiar or not? Uh, that cost seven million dollars. Mm -hmm. He said, seven million dollars from in Los Angeles, California. Mm -hmm. But for Italians, well, seven million dollars. Too much. That's too much, and we cannot raise this money. So he said that for Neenan Company, we must, we must have spent about 100000 or $200,000. Know. 
We raised some money from, you know, we had some. This is what year it was, this one? This was uh, 2006, Six. Uh, something like that, you know, yeah. So it's about, uh, you know, we were slow going. You know, we were not in a big pressure. Uh, until uh, until well, there was a big flood, the basement was flooded in the, in the, in the mosque. We had a lot of expenses, you know, water, women complaining, we had no place, you know, uh, children, women, children, so the great pressure. Mm -hmm. So then we said, okay, we had water options to have. So we, well, well, Qasim was the Amir then. Either the option was to expand that mosque, and the land we have, or uh, buy another church or something, or another building which will accommodate her. It is much more pleasant for the women. Actually, the pressure was because of women. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so we, uh, we, we found that we do anything there in that mosque, any change, the city will immediately tell us to make 50 parking places. You know, we had about five or six, seven. Maybe at most ten parking place, parking mm -hmm. spots there, right? Yeah. And there was not enough, you know, for our country. Yeah. So they they estimate about uh, one parking spot for four people occupying, and they take the maximum occupancy. Okay, they estimated. Okay, for Juma prayer, you may have two hundred people coming. Yeah. So you must have fifty parking spots, but they cannot. Uh, tell us right away because, no, we are going in the old agreement. Mm. We already paved that street, by the way. Really? Yeah. We the street. Every month? Or no, not year? every month. No, originally, originally, when we bought the city, you know, immediately wanted so many things from us. Pave the street, have parking spots, you know, uh, make the good curving, things like that, you know, they already. Yeah, I mean, always do that. The city takes advantage of any new occupancy, new development to uh, improve city street and paving, things like that, for our responsibility. So the, to cut this story short, we see the alternative, if we expand it in the back, that will cost about a million dollars, maybe, plus these 50 parking spaces, that will cost two million, which means if we cannot have you no know, space there, right? Yeah, you yeah. have to buy parking space somewhere to park. park. Yeah. So, I mean, this act, I tell you, any community which has double, some other, you know, oh, my name should be on the bus, oh, I did all that. This is a coffee mentality, I tell you, coffee mentality. They go and they put, you know, Grebel building, Guggenheim building. They, if they give a philanthropy, if they give charity, go, go. Every building in some universities, every building has a name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're working for your name, okay, Allah gives you that that fame and name. Okay, in this world, you won't have anything different in the next world except fire. Okay. So, uh, keep your niya pure and hire people employ people who know something. Again, I tell you the example of the Prophet When he went from Mecca to Medina, mm -hmm. who was his leader? Who was who was guiding Abdullah Iraq, his name? Mm -hmm. He was a Mushri. Yes. Mushri. He was not a pious Muslim. But he, he knew the way. He knew how to go around so that the Quraysh will not find them. The Quraysh will say, okay, he's going to Medina, north, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll try to go the short route. But he took, took, took them yes, around. So, so he trusted Abdullah Arikha, the Mushrik, because he knew a guide knows what, where he is going. So choose a guide, doesn't matter. He may be Fasik Muslim, doesn't matter. You know, who made Pakistan? Muhammad Ali Jinnah. If he was not a scholar of Islam, he was not a pious Muslim, but Allah grabbed him. He, was, he used to live in London, England, right? London, yeah. Yeah. but he was, he was the coolest brain in the whole Muslim world. 
Now we Muslims are very emotional. Huh? Mm -hmm. throw, throw the Jews in the sea. Yeah. This is how we talk. But do we have power? Do we have uh, means to do that? No. No, no. He was cool. One man came and made Pakistan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Mahathir Muhammad in Malaysia also. Huh? Yeah. Mahathir Muhammad, yeah. Cool, cool as cucumber, as you say <laughs> in English. Cool as cucumber. They are insulting him. They are saying you are a you are dividing Hindus and Muslims. No, I am not dividing them. They want to Muslim majority here in Pakistan. What is wrong about it? And he he dealt with all the English people and Hindu people. So this is you see, a, a, a person has to be cool, logical, not emotional, and not easily given up. Okay? Not because of this obstacle seems to be impossible. If you say impossible, then you'll give up. Okay? Yes, yeah. yes. But see, if it is possible, we'll just find a way how it is possible. If the Prophet had said, okay, going to Medina with all these people around me is impossible, to stay in Mecca. No, no, nothing will happen. No hijrah. So I think uh, we Muslims have lost that uh, cool mindedness and uh, Allah all that written. He's telling his prophet, uh, he is the re receiving wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's telling Ansar, Muhajirin, doesn't matter, men, women, whoever is knowledgeable. So, who is knowledgeable? Salman al Farsi is knowledgeable yeah. for making a, making a trench. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He didn't say, oh, this Persian guy. He was a leader. Huh? He was a leader, Salman al Farsi. Yeah. So, Alhamdulillah, I tell you, Mumtaz cool. He's not insulted. Try to insert Muntaz. I challenge you. He will not be insulted. He will refuse to be insulted. <laughs> okay? Because he, he, he is doing everything for right. Sikh yeah. 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 He says, I, I have no, no ego. Okay? I mean, uh, you know, that Yemeni brother used to, to blast him in the masjid. <laughs> Went back in Abu, what is that? Abu Majid. Yeah. Yeah. He says, I'm not, I'm not insulted. If I, if I uh, hurt you, I'm sorry. Yes. Forgive, forgive me. No? Human being, make a mistake. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's what, what is needed. Pure heart. Allah will forgive everything you have done in your life if you do one act for only His sake. The thing is, don't mix people. Remember a hadith about uh, a prostitute? He gave water to a dog, thirsty dog. And the hadith says, Allah forgave. Forgave him. Forgive him. All his all her sins. Because that one act she did only for the sake of Allah. Right? Subhanallah. The, the dog is not going to give her any ajar or anything. So my advice to whatever you do, if you are doing especially for the sake of Islam, the sake of Allah, just look in your heart. What are you doing this for? Are you want some glory for you so that people may write about you? Oh, that was the pioneer, you know. He was the pioneer. So you will get reward. You will become pioneer. They will write about you in history. Okay. But don't ask Allah to give you reward because you work for someone else. Yeah. So I think uh, the main thing I will tell you is a cool leadership, good planning, and stick to the plan. Don't be discouraged. If not today, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, Allah will open some way for providing you. And also people in the community have, uh, should, you know, follow the leader. Well, of course, yeah. yeah. You see, atiyu Allah, atiyu Rasul, wa ulil our, our uh, you know, weakness, Muslims' weakness these days is 
يروح فعله ويقول عنده ولي الامر ارنالد فعله انه الله لا 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 which you used to teach yeah, in seventh grade. My daughter especially, she and one of her Egyptian friends, they established an institute in, uh, in California mm -hmm. to correct all the misinformation which is given in the seventh grade. The seventh grade they started social studies. In social studies, they teach about other countries, you know, like Chinese, mm -hmm. Japanese, Indians, Muslims also. Uh, Muslim used to be so bad in those social issues. <laughs> they were represented by a camel, you know. Yeah. These are Badwis. They don't know any culture. They don't have any civilization. They, uh, they oppress their women. The women cannot go out. They are, you know, this, this kind of thing. And the, the, their prophet was such and such, you know. This. Alhamdulillah, the last 10, 15 years, it has all changed. Now all the textbook are written by Muslims about Islam. In fact, some Muslim authors found some, uh, some wrong things about their, about American history in those days. Well, they corrected that about, about Lincoln or, or something else. So if you sincerely, we live in this country, this is our country. Yeah. Yes. This is our home, right? Yeah. And Allah has given us this opportunity to convey His message. Your if we were not here, I mean, they wouldn't know about Islam, right? Yes. And because of us, there is a, a good feeling about Muslims because we are among them. They see as Muslims, you know. Uh, so they, you know, our neighbors, our, our co-workers, our colleagues, our students, the university, we have a good reputation. We don't know because when the first we came here, nobody knew about it. Islam or Muslim, they used to have a, a, a I remember a movie called Al Khartoum, in which they saw the Mahdi, Mahdi. Mm -hmm. he, he was a terrorist kind of guy. He used to capture some Englishman, cut off his head, mm -hmm. and take his in the back, things like that. This was the image. It's still, it's still <laughs> they are trying to do that. But Alhamdulillah, so our, our be good neighbors. Be good mm -hmm. students, whatever you do, do the best. Mm -hmm. and, and think of it, they are looking for you, yeah, they are looking, not such and such person, but he is a Muslim, he is doing this. This will reflect on the religion. They don't look at the religion of uh, somebody who blows up <laughs> uh, McVeigh or somebody, you know, some American, they don't look. But we are, everybody is looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. This is also the good message from you to extremely people in, in a Muslim country. They yeah. hate America and they hate oh, yeah. American yeah. people. Well, but if, they, if you tell them, yeah. oh, this is my country. Yeah. This is a country of Muslim. The Muslims used to be less than one-tenth of one percent here. Mm -hmm. Now they must be at least two, two percent. Two percent means about six million. Six, seven million. Even Bush said seven million. Even uh, Obama says six million, seven million. So at one time when I came, they used to say 200,000 maybe. You know? mm -hmm. So we have good future here. These people mm -hmm. are open-minded, okay? Yeah, Most of them, majority of them, they are educated. Exactly. They can be taught, they can be told what is the truth. Yeah. They can be beaten. They can be beaten. Uh, every time, you know, after 1-11, after 9-11, I have been maybe to talk to thousands of people here. The churches used to invite me. And the uh, Hewlett and Packer, they used to invite me. You know, so many of them ask, is Allah a moon god? 
I said, Allah is an Arabic word for God. If you are an Arab, you will say God. They say the Christians in Arab countries, they say Allah. This is what you expect. In Arabic we say God. Why don't you say, you, you, in Hispanic you say God, they say Dios. Why don't you tell them that Dios is the moon God? So I, I, you, know, you have to correct from very cool person. Do you worship Muhammad? So no, we don't worship Muhammad. Worship Allah. Yeah. Keep correcting them, your neighbors, your co-workers. If you are invited to speak somewhere, no, don't be shy. Say straight truth. Truth will conquer everybody. Yeah. yeah. Because you're talk from your heart to other people. Oh, yes. yeah, okay. Speak the truth. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Siddiqui, about your time and your uh, coming in the cold weather. We are in December. So uh, thank you so much about uh, your time and uh, all the information that you give us. And uh, brothers and sisters, thank you about your uh, time too. And uh, we will meet in another part with uh, Dr. Siddiqui to talk about uh, da'wah and Islam and and everything maybe to cover about uh, Islam. Uh, so thank you, every, uh, thank you so much, everyone, and we will see you in next time. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wallah.